Hey folks, it's the Mr. Flogger here, hope you're well. Now for the last uh, several months I've been riding with a pillion for the first time. I've been taking my daughter on the back of the big GS for rides and it's been great fun. Uh, and we've come up with a sort of a system of communicating which uh, consists of digs in the ribs, taps on the shoulder and so on to let me know that uh, my passenger is okay or if we need to stop or whatever. And that's all very well but it's a bit, uh, you know, lo-fi frankly. And there are technological solutions out there, namely Bluetooth intercoms. So I've got myself one of these uh, devices, I've got myself an, a, what, a Senna S20, in fact a pair of them, attach them to the uh, RAX4s that we use uh, and I've been using them and they're, they're great for talking to each other, you can talk to other riders, uh, you can listen to your GPS, you can even listen to music or the built-in radio. But they're great little gadgets and I thought uh, I would uh, let you know how I've been getting on with them. So before I get into that, let me just show you how you fit them to the helmet and uh, how they kind of uh, operate with your kit. Okay, so just before we get into the detail of how you get them in the helmet, uh, let me just show you the box that they come in, because I know some people like to see unboxings, things like that. So it looks like this when you buy the when you buy the device. It comes in a splendid box. It's a bit sort of um, Apple-esque almost, in that it's uh, quite a nice box. Um, and when you get it, it's uh, obviously mine are, if I can work out how you do it, there you go. Um, it comes laden with all sorts of stuff. And in fact, here's a picture of them still in the box rather than installed on my helmet, so you can see how neat they look when you get it. Uh, so that's what they look like uh, in the box when you when you initially get them. And then uh, underneath that top bit, there's a whole load of, um, you know, there's man, well, there's sort of a, a semi-user manual and there's all sorts of alternative ways of fixing them on your helmet. So I'll show you a bit about how that works. So, fitting then. I was a little bit worried because I obviously use often when I'm vlogging and so on, I have um, the camera on my helmet and I don't really want to end up with loads of microphones and leads and wires and all sorts all over the helmet. Um, unfortunately, there is a bit of that because of course you've got to install the thing. But um, these things are much better than I thought. So basically what they come with is this big bracket here which attaches to a boom microphone. And there, there are various options. There's not just the boom version, uh, but there's also a, a wired microphone that you can just put in there if the boom doesn't fit your helmet. Um, but that's joined to a base plate and basically you can unclip the actual gadget, take it off for charging purposes, you can just take that in, and you end up leaving the clip um, in place, which is which is great. And that thing is really, really solid, um, which I'm pleased about because I've had cheap, horrible versions of these way back in the distance past, and the thing just used to sort of clip on and it wasn't very good. But this thing is fantastic. I don't know if you can see behind my lining here, but it actually, the clip itself, if I can hold it like that, is actually bolted in place. It comes with a couple of Allen bolts that uh, go in there. I'm not sure if you can see them, I hope you can. Uh, and they supply you with the Allen key as well. Um, and the thing actually bolts on there, as I say, really, really strong. That is absolutely not coming off. If it so happens your helmet, um, you can't fit it in there, no worries, they provide a, a sort of a stick-on version as well, with those really sticky 3M pads. So, um, so that's kind of how it went on to that helmet. Um, let me show you the routing on my daughter's helmet for the microphone. So this is my uh, daughter's RA Tour X4. I'm only showing you on this one because uh, it's a bit newer and it's a bit <laughs> tidier inside than mine. So the routing itself for the microphone, very easy. Look, we've got the boom mics on here and it literally is on this extendy uh, bit here that you just tuck in underneath where the chin bar goes and that is it. And then that itself has a little wire that plugs into the back end of the mount. Uh, just there. Now if you don't use the boom mic version, you can unclip all that and just put the wire one on that sticks with a sticky pad on the front. So you've got various um, options for fitting it on the on the helmet itself and I, I think you're going to struggle to find a helmet that you can't actually fit it onto. Uh, okay, so that's uh, that's how that goes and then there's another wire here that you can see which you feed round again underneath the lining, you clip the lining off uh, and you put the earphones underneath the ear pads. You can't see them in here but they, I've just hidden the, rooted the wiring underneath the um, the pads and then clip them back in place. So they sit in there and again, there are spaces and options that uh, that Senna provide you with so you can get them close to your ear if you need to. So dead easy to install. Took me about 10 minutes per helmet to put the things in. Okay, so once you've got them uh, fitted on the helmet, the next thing to do is get them charged up. They do come with a bit of residual charge, but I like to start with a full charge. And the charging port on here is underneath this little flap here, and it uses one of those mini USB type connectors. Uh, slightly different to some you may have seen. It's kind of the, I think these are the micro ones, but it so happens it's the same micro charger as my GoPro uh, camera uses. So I don't have to carry loads of chargers with me. I can just plug that in there. So you charge in there, it takes a couple of hours for a full charge. Um, and then of course you need to study the manual. Now that's my first first problem with these is they don't actually come with a full manual. Um, they come with, uh, you download an app 
um, from the App Store, which is fine, works on Android and um, Apple phones and on the PC as well. Uh, and that has the full manual on it, which is fine. You can read it on your gadget, but I actually like a printed manual myself. So that's just the, the first thing that was slightly annoying. Um, but anyway, um, in the manual, one of the things it does ask you to do is to plug in that USB lead, connect it to your computer and download the latest drivers for the device. So that's the first thing to do. Download the drivers before you get too excited and try and play with the thing. Oh, and on the subject of uh, charging, as we were earlier, not only can you charge it using a USB, a mini USB lead like I showed you um, on your PC or, or any charger that you happen to have for your phone or whatever, but uh, in with the kit that uh, in the box comes a couple of these uh, cigarette chargers as well. So this sort of thing. There we go. So there's two of those, one for each if you buy the pair in a box, as I did, obviously. Um, and uh, so you can plug it in if you've got a GS, you can plug it into your accessory socket with the right adapters, of course. So plenty of charging options for them. And while I'm on that subject, the other great thing about these is the battery life is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I'll look up exactly what the what it is, but it's something like 12 days on standby and, and a day on talk time, something like that. But all I can say, in my normal use of it, I charge it up about once a week and then I ride four or five times a week um, and use it. And, and I'd not just um, as, a, as an intercom, but if I'm listening to my sat nav or whatever, and I just have to charge it up once a week. So battery charging is not an issue. One of the things I hate about gadgets on bikes or anything else is the fact that you have to charge them all the time. But these, you really don't have to worry too much about thinking, oh, I haven't charged it yet. Uh, they do give you an indication of how much charge they've got in them, by the way, when you turn them on. So if you actually turn the thing on, which you do by pressing these buttons, if you watch that little light there, you'll see it will flash a number of times two, three, four, and that shows that it's got a full charge. Four flashes means full charge, and then obviously it goes down to three, two, one, so you know visually when you turn it on whether you are gonna have to take it and charge it, so quite a handy little feature there. Um, while we're looking at it, um, the other the other um, features and functions are what these buttons do. This thing here is the main sort of scroll wheel, and that's mainly used for volume, but also uh, used for some of the more men, um, complicated menu selection stuff. Um, you can use this thing just using, uh, by your voice, talk to it, use your voice to control it, and then using audio prompts, you can select various options by turning the wheel. I find the user interface a little bit clunky, frankly, um, and it's not particularly intuitive. You can read about it in the manual, um, but I've kind of stuck to the basic functions, and actually once you get used to what the various buttons do, it's absolutely fine. The blue flashing light just lets you know that the thing is active. Um, there is a little aerial here that you can pop up. If you're talking to other bikers and you want to make sure you've extended the range, then stick the aerials up, that lets you do that. Uh, and again, the quoted range is something like uh, over two kilometres, so a mile in sort of line of sight. I've yet to test the full range, but uh, I've had no issue with the range at all, and I've been using them with the aerials down, so no issue there. Um, this big button in the middle is a selector button again for various options. Um, you've got a button on the back, which you use for answering and hanging up phone calls, as well as some other things. There's um, a little button on the bottom of the mount, just here, very clever feature. You press that and it basically um, lets you hear, there's a microphone in the mount and it lets you hear what's going on around you. So if you need to talk to somebody or you've been stopped by the police or whatever and you need to hear what they're saying, press that button uh, and you can hear the ambient sound. So that's an excellent little feature and that's what that button does. Okay, um, anything else to say about the housing? I've told you about the charging. No, I think that's about it. So uh, yeah, and then once you, when you want to use the thing, you've charged up, you're ready to go. As I say, you just put it on there, it gives a satisfying click. If I can slide it on. Bingo, there you go, and you're and you're then ready to roll. So, uh, so that's the that's the sort of mechanics of it. But how how does the thing work in use? So, in terms of it uh, working in in use, I've been very presently surprised with how well these things work. I uh, am a big fan of wearing ear, um, earplugs when I ride, as I've said before. And uh, with my earplugs in, I can turn this volume right up and I can hear things absolutely fine coming over the intercom, which I thought was gonna be the big issue with it, but they go really quite loud. So in terms of using it as an intercom, talking to a passenger, even with earplugs in, it's very clear. The sound quality out of these, is absolutely amazing. I, I was very, very impressed with that. Uh, and again, I'm not a big fan of things like listening to music while you're on a bike. I just think it's potentially distracting and, and unnecessarily I like listening to the engine. But if you're on a long journey, as I have been, um, and you've got this paired to your phone in your pocket, you can listen to anything on your, in your, you know, any music in your library, which I've done off my iPhone. And again, the sound quality is absolutely unbelievable. Given it's coming through, um, you know, via Bluetooth, with the um, volume cranked up, um, and you're listening through your earplugs, it is 
very listenable. I mean, it doesn't go really, really loud. Um, you can still hear what's going on with the bike and around you uh, as much as you normally can when you've got the uh, earplugs in. But you can listen to background music and enjoy that. And I've become a bit of a fan of listening to music if I'm on a long journey with these. So that was a little surprise for me. I didn't think uh, I was going to like that feature, but in fact, I do. So that's good. So music's good. It's great for talking to each other on the intercom. Um, I've also connected to my uh, Nav 5 on the, on the GS, and it gives me the voice prompts from that. Now, I have to say, the voice prompts from the Nav 5 are rubbish quality. Nothing to do with this gadget, but it's actually to do with the BMW um, sat-nav. Because if I use the sat-nav on my iPhone, which is a TomTom, -tom, the voice instructions are really nice and clear. So, so it hooks up with that as well. The great thing is it's a duplex device, so it means I can be talking to my passenger and I can be listening to music on my phone at the same time. Um, similarly, she can be listening to music off of her phone uh, and talking to me at the same time. It's absolutely amazing how that works, so, so that's great. Um, pairing is very easy. Once you've paired the, the gadgets, they stay paired until you pair them with something else. It also has a universal pairing function, so you can pair it with other uh, manufacturers' devices if you need to, if you're riding in a group. So, so um, in terms of use, pretty good. Um, I suppose the only downsides I've found is, like anything like this, if you're wearing big bulky gloves, it can be quite hard to feel where the buttons are um, and turn the volume up and down and so on. That can be a bit fiddly, but once you know where it is on the helmet, that's not a big deal. Um, and then the other thing that my passenger complained about a little bit is uh, if you're going at high speed on a motorway or a dual carriageway, um, there is a little bit of wind noise. Again, this depends on the helmet you're wearing, I guess, and this microphone is right by my vent. Um, she says that there's a little bit of wind noise that she can hear through the intercom, but it's not enough to stop us talking. So in use, no complaints whatsoever. All right, uh, I think I'm going to try and be a bit clever and see if I can set up um, my little camera, my little, um, my little GoPro inside my daughter's helmet and I'll, uh, and I'll attempt to talk to it. So hopefully I might be able to give you a bit of an indication of what the thing sounds like. This may or may not work. Okay, so this has got a distinct uh, element of uh, Tomorrow's World about it, which um, is an old TV program that used to be on the 70s where they used to do live demos of technology and they always went wrong. So uh, <laughs> this is going to be interesting. So that camera's rolling. I'm going to stick you in that camera, inside this helmet, uh, over here somewhere. Uh, stick your say there. Okay. <coughs> right, and then just shut the visor as well. Okay, and then I'll stick this one on and uh, speak, and hopefully you won't be able to hear me from there. Um, I'm thinking I'll turn this mic off as well. So you won't be able to hear me on this mic. Let's just kill this one. Okay, I'm going now. Okay, that helmet's on, and uh, I'm hoping the little camera in that helmet can hear me um, back through the intercom. So what you're hearing now is actually the Senna intercom, uh, an example of the quality. Uh, it may not work very well on there, but it's worth a try, isn't it? Okay, that's enough of that. Okay, and uh, hopefully I'm back with you. Okay, so I hope that demo worked. I'll only find out when I edit this, so uh, if you didn't see the demo, it obviously didn't work, so sorry about that. Anyway, so there we go. So that's the uh, Senna S20 Bluetooth intercom. I've been very impressed with it, more impressed than I thought I was going to be. I'm really pleased with it, and I'm going to be using that forevermore. Um, so just to summarise then my findings, I've written a few notes just to make sure I don't forget anything. So um, first thing is, I guess when you first get it, it does all seem a little bit overwhelming and complicated, just the way you have to press the buttons and so on to make things happen. Um, it's just, a, I, I do find the user interface a little bit clunky, but once you've read the manual, you've tried it a few times, got used to what you're pressing to do what is actually okay. But uh, initially out of the box, a little bit overwhelming. Um, uh, no full manual provided. I mentioned that you you use it on the on the app, which is fine. Um, but the big issue with that, and there may be a way around this, I just haven't found yet. That is, when you're reading the manual on, say, your phone, as I do, and then you try something on the on the headset because it's linked to the phone, and you press buttons on here, it takes you back to the um, opening screen of the app, and you lose the page you're in in the manual, if you see what I mean. So that is a, again a bit clunky. I'd rather have a printed manual. So that's the other negative point. Um, the other thing, voice control, a little bit gimmicky. Um, I mean, you can just speak to it and say things rather than have to remember what keys to press to do what, but uh, I've not found that works very reliably when I'm on the bike. A um, little bit fiddly to use with gloves, as I said. Um, and then last but not least, what I haven't mentioned is price. These are quality bits of kit. They feel really well made, but uh, as a result, of course, they are quite expensive. Um, if you buy them each, uh, then on sportsbikeshop.com, my favourite supplier, as I've mentioned before. Uh, I haven't got any affiliation with them, by the way. Um, they, they're currently selling these for £186.90 each. There's an offer on at this very moment. They were £260 each, which is very expensive, but uh, £186.90 each. Uh, and obviously about twice that if you want the pair. 
Um, so that's all the negative points. Um, there are far more positive points, I have to say. First of all, um, the intercom is fantastic, and the, the fact that you can use it at the same time as listening to the GPS or talking on your phone um, or whatever, the duplex um, functionality is brilliant, and, and such a step forward from my previous old intercom that I used many years ago and gave up on. Um, the interface with your iPhone is very, very easy to set up, and uh, you know you don't have to resort to the manual too much to get the things paired and so on. So the basic functions are quite easy to understand. Um, build quality, as I mentioned, absolutely solid. I think they're going to last forever. It's not fully waterproof, I don't think, but uh, I, and I've not actually ridden in rain yet, to be fair with it. But um, you know they are, they are um, showerproof, so that, and obviously they're designed to be outside on a bike, so it should be fine on, on that uh, respect. Very easy to fit, as I showed you the way they go in. Uh, installation, very straightforward and very solid once it's on there. It ain't going to fall off, so that's fantastic. Um, the range, superb. 2K line of sight is what they advertise. Again, I, I meant to get my daughters to wander off uh, and see how far we could speak to each other, but uh, as I've only used it as an intercom with her on the back of the bike, range hasn't been an issue. But uh, I think if you're on a ride out with other riders, two kilometres a mile away, that's absolutely amazing, isn't it? Um, the battery life I mentioned before, actually it's 13 hour talk time, 10 day standby. Absolutely unbelievable. I mean, that sounds a bit optimistic to me, but uh, in my experience of using it over the last month, uh, the battery does last a, a, you know, a satisfyingly long time. You're not forever plugging it in to charge it. It's not a big issue if you're on a tour or something. You only have to charge it every couple of days maximum. Um, the ambient mode I talked about, that's fantastic. The fact you press a little button, you can hear talk and hear what's going on around you, uh, no matter whether you've got music or your GPS or whatever, it all gets um, silenced and you can hear what's going on around you. Great little feature. The audio, really, really clear. Um, the fact that you can uh, listen to it through having um, earplugs in so your hearing's not damaged, I find that fantastic. It's the, the clarity of it is, is really something else. I'm hoping my demo works, I'm hoping you heard that, but uh, I'm not sure how well the microphone and the camera would pick it up. But take it from me, when you're actually using it, clarity of the audio is brilliant. Having music available, much better than I thought. I never thought I'd be a fan of music on a bike, but if you're on a long, boring journey, why not have a tune in the background? That sounds great. Um, the ability to pair with other universal headsets, so not all your pals have to have um, Senna headsets. You can you can talk to those as well, so that's great. Um, and the other thing is, once they're paired, you don't have to worry. You know, pairing again is not an issue. You just switch them both on, and you're automatically paired again. So that's great. So overall, my my sort of conclusion is these are fantastic bits of kit. I, I don't review anything that I don't love and use myself. Um, these, these things are much better than I anticipated. Um, they are a little bit complex to set up to start with and a bit overwhelming as I say, but once you get the hang of it, really, really good. And I absolutely recommend them if you're in the market for, for some um, Bluetooth intercoms. So these, once again, are the Senna S20s. Um, I've really enjoyed using them, looking forward to using them through the summer on some tours. So I hope that's been of uh, interest to you if you're in the market for some of these, and I look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Missing and Fly. Cheerio. Hello. So this is a whole new experience for uh, me on a motorcycle, listening to music in a headset. Now I haven't got the uh, Senna wired up to the microphone in any way, so uh, if you can actually hear this I'll be surprised, but uh, I've got the earplugs in and I've got the music turned up loud, uh, and I can hear the music absolutely fine. I don't know whether you'll be able to as well. In some ways I hope not, because I don't want a copyright strike, but uh, I can get used to this. Goodbye.